It's a fine day in Milton's Victoria Park. The modern playground equipment masks the history and activities of years gone by. Uh, certainly the sounds are different too. Motor cars have replaced the clip-clop of the horse's hooves. Time and distance, uh, once measured by a horse trot, are now measured by horsepower. In this uh, now tranquil setting, uh, we have a chance to remember a park in a different time. Here the farm animals grazed on the unnamed community common. It's where fireworks colored the night sky in recognition of Queen Victoria's birthday in 1857, if not before. And it's where local bands played their marches and melodies in the, under the baton of a local bandmaster. Cricket bats snapped in sport on this ground in 1857. And uh, 50 years later, it was tennis balls pounding across their net. Still later, uh, seniors played shuffleboard and children played ball. People have shivered here uh, for the November Armistice Day and Remembrance Day services for more than 70 years. The town's first outdoor movies were shown in this park, and uh, the county's public hangings of more than a century ago took place in this square block of now peaceful park. The park has become the outdoor museum of the community, probably quite unintentionally. Its postage stamp size was once considered for expansion of the county buildings. Fortunately, the complaints of citizens led to rejection of the proposal and today this block remains as Victoria Park. The origin of the name is obvious. Queen Victoria was a much loved British monarch who reigned for more than 60 years from 1838 to 1901. But it wasn't until after her death that the park was given its official name in her honor. And that was in 1909. The most significant building in this area is Milton's Town Hall, a sturdy limestone structure built as the courthouse for the newly separated Halton County in 1854-55. It was the third and last of the castellated design uh, that was built in Upper Canada West. You can see the castle-like elements on the top facade. Others were built in Guelph and London. It was designed in the Norman style with Norman arches and detailing, providing imposing characteristics to reflect the weight of the law in what was then still a very remote area. Significantly, it sits on one side of a, the only small town grass urban square in Ontario, today's Victoria Park. The architect for the building was Hutchinson Clark and pupil David Murray. Contractor was Michael Kenny. It would be unusual if the contract went well, and, and it didn't. The building was supposed to be built in a year. The contract was awarded in February 1854, but it wasn't until March 6, 1855 that council met there probably in the still unfinished building for the first time. Before construction, local residents had petitioned County Council to alter the positioning of the, of the building. They were not successful in their objections. The building was deliberately planted on its own private roadway in the middle of the four acre site as an anchor for the green space that was to become such an asset to this generation. It was that foresight which left us today's Victoria Park. The formidable stone building still fronts on an urban square of green space, which is one of its unique characteristics. Now, builder Michael Kenny was paid 2,975 pounds for his work when the project was finally accepted by the County Council. That might be contrasted with the one dollar the town paid Halton Region for the building and Victoria Park. 
or the $3 million the town spent to recycle the building to today's town hall. It should also be remembered that in 1978, Halton Region's Chief Administrative Officer recommended it be demolished and the site leased to the town for a parking lot. Happily, supporters encouraged Milton Council in its decision to recycle the building at significant cost. Their wisdom is particularly appreciated today. The building has been the site of countless historic events. After incorporation in 1857, Milton Council held its first meeting in the courtroom, now the council chambers. Victoria Park's real origin was in the thinking of an Irish settler from County Down. Hugh Foster came to Canada in 1816. He settled in the area that was to become Milton and plied his trade making barrels to contain the potash which was being produced by burning the wood of the area. The potash was an important element in early soap making. In 1832, Foster purchased 100 acres that were the complete south side of present Main Street of Milton. 20 years later, he registered a plan of subdivision, creating the street pattern and building lots which form the Foster survey of today. At about that time, growth in the area led to the separation of Wentworth and Halton counties. The hotly contested provincial legislation called for the county buildings to be built at or near Milton. Uh, residents in Oakville and Bronte were incensed with the decision. It moved the judicial and legislative center of the county inland away from the transportation of the lake. Those with land in this still unincorporated village of Milton were in competition to have the stately county center built on their land. County councillors, however, couldn't quibble over the price of Hugh Foster's offer. He agreed to provide a four-acre site free. And so the county buildings were built on the site which includes the present Victoria Park. We see Hugh's family remembered in the names of streets in the area, Thomas, Hugh, Sarah, and Mary. It wasn't until 1889 that the common in front of the courthouse got much attention. At that time, trees were planted. They ringed the site and provided summer shade. In 1909, a hexagonal bandstand was built. It included 12 electric lights that made band concerts by the local citizens band possible on summer evenings. Over the course of year, prisoners in the jail were responsible for the maintenance of this county park. Its care fluctuated with the number of prisoners available for the labor on the park grounds. The bandstand we see today first occupied a site at Halton Manor. It was built during the administration of Stan Allen, who with wife Ruth had seen a similar structure on a trip in the United States. It was copied and built for the enjoyment of residents at the manor. With changes at that site, the bandstand was surplus and was relocated to this site in Victoria Park. Next to the playground equipment, it is the newest addition as the municipality strives to regain the Victorian flavor of the grounds. The county jail was an integral part of the courthouse complex. Villains were brought to Milton from all corners of the county for trial or incarceration. That time in the lockup could involve anything from hard labor to execution. County records show frequent purchases of limestone from nearby mountain quarries. Prisoners broke the stone and quite a bit of it found its way to Milton's Main Street for road improvement. Others cut grass in Victoria Park. Assisted in the garden where the current parking lot is located and three went to the gallows. 
the three hangings, two of them public, and the third behind the jail wall, were all for murder. A present high stone wall was built as part of the new jail project in 1877 and shielded the final public hanging from the watching crowds. Each of the trials took place in the courtroom on the top floor, now beautifully recycled as Milton's town council chamber. Today's garden inside the original jail walls, faithfully and beautifully maintained by members of Milton Horticultural Society, is in sharp contrast to the Spartan treeless exercise yard and death site that was once the area's function. Similarly, the windows in the stone building now light municipal offices rather than oppressive jail cells. Before the garden could be developed, an archaeological-like search of the ground was conducted. It was important to ensure no bodies of prisoners hanged had been buried there. None were found. There are three other features of Victoria Park that have significance in the history of the community. The German field piece is a 75 millimeter field gun, which was captured in the dying days of World War I. It served German forces near Croant, France, on the Western Front. Its range was nearly seven miles. The 3rd Infantry Battalion of Toronto captured the piece in September 1918. In 1920, the two and a half ton machine arrived in Milton as a war trophy, arranged for by Dr. R.K. Anderson, Member of Parliament. It was located first between the Old Town Hall and Post Office on Main Street. Later it was moved to Victoria Park, where it remains. Town staff tired of the yearly Halloween maneuvering of the heavy gun by pranksters decided to set it in cement to avoid the annual task of repositioning it. Works uh, Superintendent Bruce McCurr arranged the work. It was a time of municipal battles with Oakville over annexation of land for Milton's growth. And local wags noted that Bruce arranged the gun with its muzzle directed towards Oakville. The mayor has assured me there's no significance in the fact it currently aims in the direction of Burlington. Today, freed from that cement anchor and meticulously refurbished through the efforts of Mayor Gord Krantz, uh, Mennonite spoke makers and town staff, the field piece is a reminder of past conflicts. Those serious conflicts are recognized each Remembrance Day as Miltonians gather to honor those who died in the two world wars and the Korean War. The gathering is at the Soldiers Memorial, which was unveiled in 1926 to honor those who were killed in the First World War. Despite a heavy rain on that day, September day in 1926, it was estimated 3,000 attended. A large part of the program took place in the arena, which stood on the site of the present post office. The memorial is of Canadian granite, uh, and the figure of the soldier was from an original by prominent Canadian sculptor Emmanuel Hahn. Efforts to erect the monument were initiated in 1920, and the task of raising $10,000 was spread over a period of years. There were 49 from Milton and area recognized on that first monument. Another 25 names were added to memorialize those from Milton killed in the Second World War. Significant battlegrounds from the two wars, uh, Sicily, Holland, Italy, the Somme, Vimy, Ridge, Passchendaele, Ebes, Mons, read like a litany to the terror and sacrifice of those times of long ago. A solitary name, Trooper J.F. Smiley, from the Korean War was added after that conflict ended in 1953. His grave is in the United Nations Cemetery in Busan, Korea.
he was just 19. Finally, the park has the 1893 Town Hall Bell, where citizens gather to welcome the new year. It's now mounted on a stone cairn, and the stone has significance for the community's past. It was chosen from buildings demolished in the community, and individual date stones uh, commemorate those elements. The Bruce Street School of 1857 is recognized on one side, stone from a Murray Street house dated 1877 on another, and a Main Street store from 1860 is recognized on the other side. The historical stone was provided by Brad Clements, who had the foresight to retain the material. The bell itself was the town's third bell, and it was cast by the Blimmer Bell Company of Cincinnati. It hung in the cupola of the Main Street building to summon aid to fight fires, uh, to signal an interruption in the municipal water supply while pipes were being repaired, uh, to sound the time of day, and certainly to signal the hours of worship on Sunday. Because of its elevation, it is said that farm workers in the area could hear it peeling. When the cupola was removed from the town hall in 1954, the bell was lowered to the next level and was less effective. In 1967, the tradition of ringing in the new year was initiated, and in 1985, the bell was removed from the building when the town offices were located to Victoria Park Square. And now, of course, it continues to serve as the focus for the ringing in of the new year under the leadership of Mayor Gord Krantz. And this is our final stop in Victoria Park. Here we remember Hugh Foster, who gave the site for the present Town of Milton Municipal Offices and Victoria Park. Hugh Foster's generosity has been recently recognized. His motives may have been to promote development of his land, but his vision reached beyond the 1853 tracks in the mud of an early Milton to the streets of a developed and prosperous community. He didn't live to see that. Just four years after he registered his orderly plan of subdivision, he was dead. His property was parceled out and his memory largely ignored. Foster Avenue, originally part of the present Charles Street, was wiped from the town map by a later council action to meet the need for consistency. It wasn't until this generation that researchers of Milton Historical Society and others suggested to council that Hugh Foster be recognized in the naming of the small stone building beside the town hall. Now meetings, receptions, and events regularly take place in Hugh Foster Hall. It's an attractive building which began life in 1915 as the county registry office. Here, land transfers and legal documents were recorded for more than 40 years. Then it served as a family court and children's aid society office before being purchased by the town to be included in the impressive buildings of Victoria Park Square, Milton's Outdoor Museum. The sights and sounds have changed. The events are not always as dramatic as in the past, but Hugh Foster, the Irishman from County Down, Ireland, can still smile down on this attractive green square, the county's historic heart.